There once was a man with a sword, who sliced his way through a whole horde. He took some nice drugs to take out the thugs, Katana Zero will make you feel floored. Hey guys, James here again, and today I want to talk about Katana Zero, a 2D hack and slash platformer developed by ASCIISoft and published by Devolver Digital. In this game, you play as a katana wielding assassin named Zero, capable of slowing down time and quickly slashing through large groups of enemies. You're sent to take out various targets, all while trying to uncover more about his mysterious past. If I had to compare this game to other games, I'd say it's like if you took the fast-paced, one-hit, death-style gameplay of Hotline Miami, taking it from a top-down view, and instead turning it to a side-scrolling hack-and-slash. Overall, I really enjoyed Katana Zero and is probably my favorite of these one-hit, death-style games. It's fast-paced, stylish, and constantly keeps you wanting to uncover more. Now let's dive into this. In Katana Zero, you play as a samurai-looking assassin named Zero. You find out that Zero has a psychiatrist who gives Zero his contracts and also injects him with a mysterious drug that allows him to slow down time and seemingly foresee the future. Every level, you're given a person you need to take out. To reach them, you must first make your way through a slew of henchmen first. Zero is armed with a few different tools at his disposal. First, he has his trusty katana, which is usually capable of taking out enemies in one hit. Zero is also capable of a roll or dash, which can make him temporarily invincible. Occasionally, there will be a variety of items which Zero can also pick up and throw at enemies, including knives, molotovs, smoke grenades, and more. Finally, with the help of drugs, Zero is capable of slowing down time, allowing him to react to enemy attacks and even deflect bullets back at them. However, you have a limited amount of juice that you can use to slow down time. The overall moveset is simple enough, but with it, you can pull off some pretty sweet sequences. Despite these powers, Zero is fragile and only takes one hit to kill. That means, you need to completely clear a floor without dying if you want to proceed to the next checkpoint. Thankfully, the game actually has some pretty forgiving checkpoints and I never felt overly frustrated, at least on normal difficulty. By its nature, the game is quick-paced and punishing, and as a result, you might find yourself dying. A lot. It'll take some trial and error, especially as you learn the layout and enemies in each screen, but once in a while, you'll get through a run in the stage which is just so... satisfying. However, I actually did find there were some times where I felt like you had to sit back and wait in order to more easily clear a section, which does slow down the pacing a bit, but maybe this was a personal choice and if you're skilled enough, you can probably be constantly moving. Another thing to note though is that not every life will play out the exact same way. What I mean by this is that, sometimes, some enemy movements might not follow the exact same timing or responses as a previous life which, since you have to learn through trial and error, can actually throw things off a little bit. But since I didn't find the game ridiculously hard like some other games of this style, I didn't actually see this as a huge problem. I really enjoyed the level design of the game. One thing I particularly liked about the level design was the fact that they often gave you multiple possible paths to take, which really allows you to adapt and be creative, figuring out the best way to approach the different floors. Outside of the usual hack and slash stages, there are actually also a couple of pretty unique levels, including a stealth level, a level where you play on a motorcycle, and a level where you get to play as a different character. These levels were definitely an appreciated change of pace and helped to keep the game from feeling repetitive. As for the enemy types, I think there was actually a pretty good variety. There are some melee enemies, some ranged enemies, and some robots and obstacles which you need to approach differently. Naturally though, as you learn the different enemy attacks, the game will become a lot more predictable and as a result, easier. In particular though, I really enjoyed the boss fights which in my opinion are some of the best parts of the game. I think something to note though is that the game is actually quite short, with the first playthrough taking maybe as little as 3 hours, of course depending on how skilled you are. I personally didn't find the game particularly hard on normal difficulty, at least not to the level of some other games of this style, and in fact, I was pretty bad at the whole time slowdown mechanic and I still managed to beat the game fairly quickly while barely using that power. In terms of story, the story in Katana Zero is… interesting. It's a bit cryptic and odd at times, but as a result it really kept me guessing and wondering what the heck was going on. The entire journey is a drug-fueled and trippy adventure, so I really enjoyed that and how confusing it could sometimes get, almost akin to a mindfuck movie. There are some really interesting and mysterious characters who I definitely want to learn more about, and I think that the bond Zero develops with a neighboring little girl is one which players will latch onto. It was also cool to see that some different actions and dialogue options you have could potentially affect some parts of the story. There are some weird parts of the story for sure, and I did find certain parts maybe a bit pretentious or unsatisfying, but something to note is that the game ends on a cliffhanger, so a lot of this might actually be addressed as DLC comes out in the future. Where Katana Zero really shines is in the graphics and sound design. The game has the cyberpunk aesthetic to it, although maybe not quite as futuristic as some other games in the genre. While the graphics are pixelated, I found that the quality of the animation and art was pretty great. The game always looked great, and in particular, I found that the animation felt incredibly smooth, especially for 2D pixel art. For such a quick-paced game, I also never felt like I couldn't tell what was going on. 
The game overall is also just really stylish. They present every run in a level as Zero seeing the future, sort of like that Bruce Willis movie Looper, and when you finally beat a section, it replays your run as if a security camera had captured you on film. I thought this was a nice touch, although maybe the black and white security footage could have had some objects and obstacles made a little more clear. Even the cutscenes and dialogue are really stylish and were definitely enjoyable to sit through. The music and sound design in the game is also amazing. You really feel every slash and every kill you get, which is really important for a game like this. Not only that, but the music absolutely bangs. They present the music in each level through Zero listening to his cassette player, which is a nice little touch. The soundtrack consists mostly of synth-heavy techno, which dominates cyberpunk, although there are some different scenes and areas with different styles of music. The soundtrack has this dark, moody overall feel to it, where it's booming, deep, and just makes you feel like a badass as you slash your way through enemies. I'm really trying to think of complaints, and honestly, I don't have much. Maybe the game could have been harder, but the hard mode and speedrun mode you get after beating the game can help satiate that. And maybe at times the game could feel a bit button mashy, but I think that's natural with hack and slash games. And even then, playing methodically and smart is equally as rewarded. Overall, I really enjoyed my time with Katana Zero and would definitely recommend it. The game is just super satisfying, and I guess outside of how you react to and interpret the story, I don't think there's any clear weaknesses. Maybe the game is a tad short for $15, but if the DLC does end up being free like they say it will be, then I think I can forgive that. Overall, I thought Katana Zero was worth every penny, and definitely a game to check out. But hey, that's just me. Feel free to let me know down below what you think. Have you tried Katana Zero, and what did you think of it? And if you made it this far, I just wanted to say I appreciate you checking out this video. If you enjoyed it, please consider hitting that like or subscribe button as it really helps my channel and motivates me to make more and better videos. And as usual, I hope you have a great rest of your day. Peace.